Hello, Jim. How are you doing? Good, Paul. How are you? Good, thank you. That's good. Yes, welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, can I have, have you got time uh, for me to just ask a very quick question? I'm a rank amateur when it comes to this, um, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to show you the dashboard of my account. It is, if I can, um, it yeah, is complete. Sure. There it is. It's completely different to the it's one you're looking for. Are going to be watching YouTube and looking for a video to do it themselves? Is that, <laughs> is that the is, classic? Somebody's is watching it. Yeah. And um, so, and, and uh, then they'll go off and, you know, attempt it themselves. So in their mind, because they've seen you, you're... you're... Yeah, right, no okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Is that the classic? Uh, sorry, um, got, got uh, distracted there. What was the um, question again? That's all right. This dashboard, is that the classic that you were talking about last week or is um, you were talking about the Gutenberg? Uh, so... Um, He's talking about yeah, the editor, Paul. That's just... Yeah, yeah. Um, so last week I was talking about the editor. Yeah, the Gutenberg editor. That's right. The dashboard doesn't have anything to do with that. So... Um, like if you go into pages and posts, like if you go to and create a new post, then to posts, yeah, either or, either pages or posts. Um, so, in other words, what I'm asking is, is my editor the Gutenberg editor, or is it the classic editor? I I don't know which it is. Go, so. go into like create a new post or uh, edit which, a post, which is here or posts. Yep. And it's as slow as a wet week, of course, being on Zoom. <laughs> and yeah, edit up here. And just edit, say, either edit that story is life post that you've got there, or you can create a new post, either or. It's, um... <clears throat> so this will tell you, tell us if uh, you've got the classic or the Gutenberg. Yeah, that's all I wanted to ask. And I'm sorry to take up time on this, but... Uh... Oh, that's okay. I'm absolutely learning everything here. <laughs> well, good. We all must start from somewhere. Okay, so that's Gutenberg. That is Gutenberg? Good. That's thank Gutenberg. You. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. That's, thank you very much. So I can stop that now. <laughs> thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. You, you, right. you still have to install the plugin to actually activate the classic editor, I think, yeah. Paul. Yeah, it doesn't oh, let good. you do it. Um, and it sends you straight to Gutenberg unless you actually install a plugin, Jim. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I've, uh, I've only had this uh, for the last uh, two years um, and I've just uh, been fiddling around with it, not really doing it seriously. And uh, I just needed to, to know whether or not it was the correct one that, uh, or the one that you were talking about last week, Paul, so I can start yeah. playing around with the edits. So, thank oh, you. Well, Thank Can you. I just ask a quick question too, please, uh, based on what Jim has just said? Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, because I do podcasts, I've got very little interest in Gutenberg on my landing page. I just want a brief connection with my podcasts. But on other pages, um, it could be worth my while doing Gutenberg because I'd like to elaborate on some of the things I do. So in, my question is, could I be in classic on say my posts, but Gutenberg on the pages? Hmm. Um, can, you, can you see what I'm saying? On, on my post, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need brevity. I don't need anything fancy. All it is is a link back to my podcast. But if I want to elaborate yeah. on those podcasts, I can then open a page or would like to open a page mm. where I would then like to have graphics and, and other things of interest. Sure. Um, right, and when you go to search, you actually have the opportunity to go into Classic Editor or the others. Pardon me? Sorry. You have an option to use Classic Editor. Uh, yeah, just just for just yeah. for the post because I all I need is brevity. I don't I don't need any fancy fonting or uh, or. I, I I just think yeah, just use Gutenberg, regardless. 
because it's it's the default editor now so okay okay um, yeah. and it, you know eventually um wordpress is gonna just not support classic editor like it's that they've said it in their, their documentation they're not going to mm -hmm. support uh the classic editor in, uh from 2022 so i just get used to the gutenberg and you can okay. just you can yeah, still use the, you can still use the gutenberg for just brevity like just basic stuff like you don't need to you know it's just they're just different um totally different editors um but yeah i, I just think you use gutenberg all around i mm -hmm. think you shouldn't really have to wear it yeah it is i think it is possible to install the classic editor and then in the classic editor settings you can set whether you want you know the gutenberg to um to work on uh or the classic editor to work on say pages and not posts that mm -hmm. i think that's possible but um i just think for just simplicity and keep it all uniform just use gutenberg get used to it it's really cool <laughs> it's a really good plot it's a really good um it's becoming a pretty good editor so um yeah and if you go to podcast then you know you could probably use a block to um maybe even uh, import your, like the audio of your podcast. So then you can have yeah, that. That, on, that was going to be stuff. another question. I'm just signing up with Podbean because apparently they connect with WordPress very easily. Yeah. So they say, I haven't looked into it yet. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. The joys of working at home. <laughs> hey bud, hey, I'm on a meeting. Yeah, I've got my cats that come and jump in. So if you see a little furry thing come across my screen, that'll be my rag doll that um, seems to want attention. Um, I actually do training with international students and they, um, uh, they're, they're quite used to now, all of a sudden the cat appears in my lap. <laughs> so it's kind of like the version of the kids coming into the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants to come back again. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I was yeah, you got the cats, Brett? <laughs> it's not like this is you know on a on an international you know news mainstream media <laughs> so. you've got a habit of sitting in the background in the kitchen over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all keeps right us all, uh, keeps us all grounded <laughs> <laughs> hey jeff hey moana how you doing pretty good thanks pretty good hey mo were you listening to nick's um live stream or stream at the same time could you see i was i'm a woman i can multitask but i yeah, can't believe that i wanted to hop onto your one <laughs> <laughs> i felt a bit guilty <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> well thanks for joining me seem to be lots of things happening all at once so yeah yeah it's um mm -hmm. yeah the whole timing thing is just fun all right so let's get cracking shall we so um Today's topic, uh, I was going to focus on image optimization because last week was, um, you guys alluded to that, that you wanted to know a little bit more about it. So is that cool for me to run on that? Do you want me to cover off on a little bit of that? And then and I'll show you what I do in terms of um, when it comes to image optimization and then you can maybe get inspired or you could not get inspired and just go and completely do something different yourself. Um, but I'll show you some tools and things that I use sometimes to get things done. Um, but the main, uh, what, so what's the main reason why we want to optimize our images? Speed. Speed. Mm. Speed. Mm. Yeah, load speeds, definitely. That's one of the biggest factors. So yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Any other another factor too should be lazy loading, I think too. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yes, I mean you could, um, you know, it's not imperative that you have lazy loading, but it does definitely help. Does everybody know what, and understand what lazy loading is? I don't know what that is. It's just when the when the website is just really lazy to load, like it just doesn't want to 
you know, wakes up in the morning and hasn't had his coffee yet. And oh. it's just like, I don't want to load. Uh, people yep. want to look at me again. I don't want to do this. Yeah. So it's, um, so I've no. got a brand new laptop and I have, I'm conscious of only storing things on the cloud and it does seem to take a long time to start up. Is that lazy loading? <laughs> that could be a sign that your computer is being lazy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you need to, you need to pay it some more money or something or, um, <gasps> oh, I just bought a brand new one. <laughs> fire it some way, just, you know, maybe look at, you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, let your computer look at the window and say, you know, uh, that that's your direction. So come on. Um, yeah. You, uh, if you don't wake up and stop lazy loading, then uh, you're out the window. Yeah. So just threats like that. Just, yeah. I always thought, uh, Paul, it was just that there was too many uh, programs being active in the background. Yeah, yeah. that's from storing things on the cloud instead of on the computer. Yeah. yeah, try defragging your computer might help. Mm. Um, and and he, he, how full your memory is the other thing yeah. um, that can affect it. So you need, even though um, you, if you've got like 20 gigs spare, then it might run a bit better. But if you've only got five gig, then it might be starting to, um, you know, not take, not use up that memory. Um, it uses that sometimes to speed up um, when it wakes up. <laughs> even if it's brand new, like, Oh, yeah, it, it's, it depends on what's on there. It could just be that um, a lot of them, them um, they, it might be the processor. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, if it's a laptop, um, because they, it, it, um, you know, unless it's a, I, I run like Camtasia and video editing software. Oh, um, and it. yeah, and it won't actually run on my, um, on one of my laptops because the process is just not fast enough. Mm. So it, it's it, 1.8 instead of 2.4 or something. Oh, but yeah. they do that so they run cooler. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 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 a problem with the chip. So I've had to not use that laptop anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I bought a new one. <laughs> you could always um, check your startup um, applications as well. So sometimes, you know, it might um, run programs like when you when you set up. Yeah, when you turn on your computer, it will start loading applications um, mm -hmm. and start running them. And then that will slow down your site, so uh, down down your own computer. So, uh, so you can go into your startup, uh, your startup applications, and maybe turn them off, or you know have a look to see what's running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. But, uh, but lazy loading as regards websites is actually yeah. it just loads up uh, above the fold, fast, yeah. and it doesn't try and load the whole page, which mm. and only as you scroll down. Yeah. And does it start to load? And mm. one of the things you'll find that if you want to find out how bad lazy loading is, or without lazy loading, look on some of these Facebook things that tell you, you look up something about uh, different movie stars. And there's probably about 20 different pages there. Mm -hmm. And it just, just, as it's loading, it's just so slow going down because they haven't got lazy loading. Um. That, that's the extreme. But on your own website, lazy loading is actually attached to some of the uh, plugins or uh, um, image optimization. Mm. I like some of those <laughs> comical explanations. Yeah, that's that's the actual. Um, that's what we're actually talking about. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing us back on track. <laughs> yeah, so that's um that's cool. I'll uh, I'm gonna, yes. All right, well, let's um let me just do my thing, and then I'll just show you a few things, and then um and then if you have any more questions, if you have any other gen general generic questions as well, um, hold them until the end. Um, but yeah, we'll just crack on. So, image optimization one hundred and one. The reason why we want to uh, optimize our images is because we want to help our websites load faster. That's bottom line. Um, so um, when we talk about image op optimization, there's, um, uh, it usually comes down to the, uh, the image file size and the image dimension size. So there's two sizes when we talk about image, um, image optimization. So we want to, um, 
we want to reduce the image size down. So from uh, say, you know, if the image is 5,000 pixels wide and 3,000 pixels high, uh, then we'll know that that image is probably going to be quite a large image file size because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pixel density. Um, and you get that from, you know, using um, sort of kind of high-end cameras that um, generate large image file sizes. Uh, even your mobile phone, um, if you're just going to be using the, uh, the original photo, um, then that's going to be, you know, a couple of megabytes in file size. Um, and it's going to be, you know, 2000 uh, pixels wide. So the idea of optimization is to bring the size of the image down in terms of the dimensions. And also that will uh, incur a, um, a reduction in file size as well. So, and the general rule for when we're aiming for a file size um, is to, I always have a rule of like less than 150 kilobytes in file size. So bringing an image down from its original size down to a smaller size and then optimizing the image even further to reduce that image file size down to less than 150 kilobytes if possible. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so in practicality, I'm just gonna share my screen now. I'm gonna show you what I mean um, by that. So everybody can see my computer? My desktop? Yeah, cool. Yep. So let's just go and um, I'm just going to go to my favorite website for getting free photos, which is unsplash.com. Um, and I'm just going to search for, um, I don't know, I'll just maybe even just grab an image from one of these. So um, uh, let me grab. That's an interesting one. Um, is there anything to do with WordPress in here? Let's see. Oh yeah, cool. Let's keep it on topic, shall we? Um, all right. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use this guy sitting at the keyboard. So I'm going to download that to my computer. Uh, then I'm going to open up that file in my. Don't look at my downloads because it's um, huge. <laughs> I've got so many download files. Uh, embarrassing. Um, all right. So. There's the image there, right? So everybody can see that that uh, in my, everybody can see that image? Yeah. Now if I look at the image size, it's 1.2 megabytes in file size. Now if I was gonna upload that image, um, oh, and the dimensions is about, is 4,272 wide and 2,848 high. Uh, now if I was gonna upload that image directly to my website, just as is, maybe change the name of it, um, then uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. Who said good thing? <laughs> All right, so now remember, going back to my, my rule of thumb, we want to keep our images, uh, well, this is how I like to do it, is I, I usually try and want to keep my image size less than 150 kilobytes. Now is 1.2 megabytes bigger than 150 kilobytes or lower than 150 kilobytes? Keep in mind that, um, what is it? There's a thousand kilobytes in a megabyte. Approximately 10 times bigger. Mm. Yeah. So our goal is to take this image and to size it down so it's less than 150 kilobytes. Um, but also you need to uh, think about the um, what you're going to be doing with this image as well and where it's going to be going on your website and um, yeah and I'll, I'll go through that. So the first thing I like to do is I yeah, like to figure out all right what am I going to do with this image? Am I going to be putting it onto obviously a page um, or a post or somewhere where I need to stick it somewhere? I'm just going to go in and create a new page. Um, I'm going to use Elementor just to give you guys a bit of a, a 
a sneak peek of uh, what Elementor looks like. So I'm using Elementor to build this page. And uh, so Elementor is a popular page builder, which is pretty neat. So just taking its time. Zoom is really slowing down my internet speeds right now. So. It, it yeah. does, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Mm. Uh, come on. So does everybody understand so far yeah. <clears throat> what I'm alluding to? Cool. Yes. Uh, okay, so here's my, um, my page editor. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, create a structure. Uh, let me go full width. Um, I'm going to just knock out that header. Uh, let me just go to canvas. Hopefully that removes that top bar. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to create a full width section and I'm going to drag an image uh, widget over. Then I'm going to create another structure, half, half, and I'm going to do the same. I'll just copy and paste those in there. Uh, then I'm going to create another structure with three columns. Paste, paste, paste. And I'm just going to use that. All right, so we've got some, um, we've essentially got, uh, yeah, different image sizes here. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just publish, publish that. I'll do a preview. Okie dokie, cool. So the first thing you need to do is decide, all right, is the image going to be, you know, fairly large? Is it going to be this first one here at the top? Uh, is it going to be kind of a, a uh, you, can actually, you, can go f you can go larger and you can go full width. Um, and I'll go over that. But um, for the purpose of this is that, yes, what I want to do is I want to have the image uh, exactly or very much close to the actual dimension of how I want it to display on the website. So, and the reason why I want to do that is because if I upload a really large file or a, a, a really large photo and I stick it, say, in this, one of these, you know, um, smaller three column or these smaller half columns, um, then what, what's happening is the browser is going to then have to do a little bit more work to make that larger image that I upload and it's going to have to um, basically render that large image and make it look smaller inside that box uh, or those um, or the output on the display of the website. So. What our goal is to do is like, if the image is going to be this one here, for example, then I'm, I want to optimize that image to be exactly that size and how it's going to output on the website. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, because I, because again, we don't want the, the browser to have to do all the work to make that image smaller. So, um, so let's let's first find out how big this these images are. So I'm going to go in and just do an inspect. And this is what I do as well. So I inspect the size. So you can use Chrome's inspection tool by you know clicking right clicking on an element, go to inspect, and then this inspection window pops up. Uh, then you click on the little inspect icon, which is at the very top uh, left of that of that pop up box. And then you can hover over things and you can see that it highlights. So you can see that the image here is uh, 550 by 366.66. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do then is aim for uh, resizing our image down to that particular size in dimensions. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And then obviously this larger one here is 1120 by uh, 746.66. So again, we want to make the, you know, we want to make the image. So if we're uploading an image that's like say 2000 pixels wide and we're putting it into this larger image, 
then again, the browser is making that image display obviously smaller than uh, the original upload size. Uh, so it's then having to do extra work to make the image smaller or appear smaller on the website. Just stop me if, it, if, I, if I'm not making any sense. <laughs> so, um, and then obviously these little small images in the three columns down here, you can see the 359.98. So ultimately we want to figure out, all right, how big is the image going to output on the, on the front end? Uh, determines how big the image needs to be when we upload it to the website. It's pretty much as simple as that. So, so let me just demonstrate. So this one here is 1120 by 746. So um, we need to, now, now I need to go and grab my image that I've downloaded which is currently 4,200 pixels wide and 2,848 pixels high. So I want to, I need to, I need to reduce the file of uh, the, the size of that image. So to do that, there's several ways we can do it. So um, if you have Photoshop on your computer, then awesome. And if you know how to use it, awesome again. <laughs> Uh, but if you don't know how to do it and you don't really have any tools uh, on your computer or you're not sure of any anything that's uh, available on your computer, then you can always use the Pixlr online editor, which is pretty neat. Has everybody used this? Anybody used this before? I've used Canva. Um, yeah, I've used Canva. Right, cool. Well, you could... Yeah, I'm not 100% familiar with Canva, so um, you oh, might be able to, what about the old be able to set up um, particular, what about the old you know, fashion paint? Sorry? What about the old-fashioned paint, you know, that comes automatically? Because that's what I always used to use before. That way you can just go in either and reduce your dimensions or your pixel size. Absolutely. You could definitely do that as well. So, yes. I personally don't use paint, but yeah, you, you could certainly. Um, it's just do that. very simple. That's all. Yeah, yeah, and there's um, uh, and there's also Sally uh, mentioned last week that um, she uses one called Earthfound View, which is I think another application that you can download to your computer and use as well. So, mm -hmm. but you know, if you don't have any of those, or if you don't really know what you're doing in with that regard, you can always use this um, this free online pixel editor, which is pretty neat. Um, so I'll just, I'll just quickly show you how to use it. Um, so I'm just gonna go and there's two versions. You can use the advanced or the playful. Uh, I'm gonna use advanced. Um, and the reason why is because there's just a whole bunch of new tool, like of tools that you can use um, for that, which we probably won't need, but Anyway, I'll just show you. So, so going to advanced, uh, there's already there's an image already that I've done. Now I'm going to go and open the image. Click on open image. I'm going to navigate to my image that I downloaded. I'm going to open that up, and then it's going to ask you. You can, um, you know, choose a size. Uh, now I'm just going to choose the. Uh, I'm just going to choose the web size because that's kind of close to where I want. Um, I think you can actually even, I haven't actually tried this. Uh, you could probably even just put in, no, I've actually tried this. Kind of doesn't really work because it doesn't keep the image. So if I go in and put 1120 there, notice that the, oh, the height changes by clicking on it. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yep. Cool. So you can just type in new size here it, to the size that you sort of want. Um, and then you can apply and then that will, um, that will automatically uh, resize it down for you. So that's pretty neat. Um, if you didn't do that and you chose one of the three options that came up, um, you could just come in and go to the image selection here, go to image size. And then you could change the uh, the height and width, the width and height here down to the size that you that you want. Make sure you've got uh, constrained proportions. Uh, that's already enabled, but yeah, you want 
you want um, whatever you change in the width, uh, the height automatically changes to keep everything in proportion. So cool. So that's our first um, that's our first step is to just resize the image down to a, a smaller file size, a, a file a dimension size. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File. Then I'm going to go uh, Save. Now, this is where it gets really kind of cool. Um, so obviously you give yourself, give it a name. So uh, WordPress dude at computer. And all right, so you can, uh, you can choose your different file types here. So JPEG, PNG, WebP and PXD. Um, I normally just keep it as JPEG. WebP looks interesting, not totally 100% sure about what web, I know WebP is a more compressed file format. Um, so, but I haven't really played with that yet. So I'm gonna stick with um, the safe option. So I'm gonna keep it as a JPEG um, to, uh, yeah, cause I'm not, um, I don't have an image that has a uh, transparent background. Um, so I'm gonna keep it JPEG and then you can slide the quality uh, selection tool here. And notice that uh, just here, can everybody see that where I've got it highlighted? Yep. So that's the that's going to be the output size of the image. So it's 155 kilobytes in file size. Or well, could, could you just explain this quality? I mean, surely we all want maximum quality. What, what uh, well, if you go to the lower end of that scale? Well, as I. Um, I mean, that's okay. I mean, I'd probably say that's acceptable, but um, I mean, I do sort of tend to bring the quality down a little bit. Um, because? Well, you can see that I've now reduced my image size more than half just by bringing it down from 90% to 60%. So um, now keep in mind, like, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, um, that's going to make the file size. Uh, that's going to make the uh, the image probably a little bit. Like it may not be very noticeable in terms of um, the compression of the image. So, because um, when you bring the quality down, obviously you're bringing the quality of the of the pixels down. So it um, might make the image look a little bit dodgy. Like if I bring it down to you know zero, then or one percent. It, it could make the image look really not that great. So, um, but you know, like it's websites, we don't really, you know, we wanna have a, an acceptable sort of measure between image quality and image file size. Um, and so that's why I don't always go down to 1%. I always, you know, go up to around about 60 or when I'm actually doing Photoshop, I'll, I'll actually bring it down to like 30% quality. Um, and, uh, and I usually find that that's still okay. That the image doesn't really, like it loses quality obviously, but um, I'm, I'm sort of more aiming to get the website load speeds a lot more faster and, um, you know, compromise a little bit on the image quality. Um, but it's the web. I mean, people aren't, aren't going to really sit there and scrutinize images too much unless, you know, you're a, I don't know, a photographer or something, you need something a little bit more high quality. So, I mean, if the image is like, you know, 300 pixels wide, then, um, you know, you could probably get away with a lot more, uh, a lot more quality compression as well. Um, because people aren't going to sit there and go, oh, you know, that's, that image is looking a little bit, less quality it's it, you know they're just not going to probably do that so well, it's that's why like, not going to really matter to me my photographer friend she will send me files in high resolution and low resolution like two lots of the same file so that would be to, some mm. to put on the web the yeah. Low yeah yeah graphic designers and uh photographers and stuff like that will have yeah will provide you with different versions um but even the web versions that they provide may still be pretty large, like in terms of, um, unless you specifically say, all right, I want, you know, this particular image to be this dimension because that's how it's going to display on the website. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then they're not going to really know that. So they're just going to give you, you know, um, yeah, just generic screen. file sizes and, 
Yeah. And then it's up to you to either make the image sizes smaller to fit the website um, or to just maybe get away with it and just upload them and hope that it doesn't slow your site down. But there's, you know, there's other ways we can, um, what we can do to, you know, help speed up our site other than compre uh, optimization. But I'm just, I'm just showing you that this is generally the best way of doing things um, from the get go. And I'll get into the other tools a little bit later, but um, yeah, I just want to show you this first. So, um, but they're not going to be like zooming in unless it's a, um, you know, e-commerce website where you're probably going to be set up to handle those sort of bigger pictures anyway. So. Yeah. I mean, again, even then, like, um, y yeah, you might have like larger product sizes or product image sizes. Um, you know, so on the product page, you know, people might want to just enlarge the product image so they can see it a little bit better or, um, so yeah, you might have the image size on a pro on a e-commerce platform. The image sizes might be a lot bigger. Um, uh, originally, like the original file size, you might upload is a lot bigger than what it displays at on the website. So that then allows people to yeah click on them and open them up in a maybe a larger light box or something, and then they can you know look at the products in a in a closer way. You notice that on you know sites like eBay and um, I think Gumtree and all that sort of stuff they do that and yeah so yeah good point so anyway um, so I've, I've grabbed this uh, so I'm saving this image down I've I've changed the image um, quality down from ninety percent down to sixty percent I'm happy with that I've changed the file the file size itself is now sixty seven point eight kilo, kilobytes so. That's a tick for me. I'm I'm happy with that. I mean, I could even probably even bring it up to like seventy percent, and it's still eighty point nine kilobytes. It's less than one hundred and fifty kilobytes. It's uh, less than you know. Um, it's comparable. I, I'm happy with that. So, um, and you can just play around with obviously the the quality and stuff, and uh, and see what the effects are. But anyway, I'm going to keep it at seventy. I'm going to download that image in that file size and I'll go and open that up in my, my finder. So there it is. I'll just go and pop that on my, so this is the original file size, um, 1.2 megabytes and 4,000 by 2,800 2, uh, dimensions. And this is now my, um, my new uh, optimized image which is 83 kilobytes and 1120 by 747. Now this is the image to uh, go into this top box here. So I'm gonna go in and now add that image in here. So my finder, I'll drag that across. Let's uh, see how fast this is. And Cool. Uh, then I put my uh, alt text in. Um, WordPress dude at computer. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. And then I'll insert the, uh, the media. Okay, cool. So there you go. You can see that that's now populated. So then what I want to do is I want to do the same for, um, for these images. So I want to go back to uh, I won't do all of them, but I'll just, um, I'll show you what I mean. So, I mean, I could use this, I could use this same image again um, and add that in. Um, actually, this image size here, I need to go width and go full width. Cool. Um, so, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by what I was talking about. All right, so, okie dokie. So I've got the same image uh, in, the, in these columns here. Uh, so what's happening with this, this larger image? It's fine, the browser is not having to do any extra work to make this image the way it is or display because it is in the dimensions that it's displayed at. 
however, for these images, the, the half columns uh, and the, the, the third column images, um, the browser has to do the work to make the image down to that, that size. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, uh, we want to go back and we want to, um, we want to then optimize our images down to that, to the size that they display at. And that's what I would do at, uh, that's what I would do. Um, I won't demonstrate that just for time purposes, but um, does everybody get what I'm saying? <laughs> yep, perfect, <laughs> thank forward. you. So, yep. Yeah. So the number one goal of image optimization is what? Less than 150 kilobytes. Yep. To decrease it, to make it fast. Correct, yeah. So we wanna, um, so yeah, I mean, again, it doesn't have to be 150 kilobytes. I mean, if, it, if it's 160 kilobytes, cause some images you just can't, uh, you can't get away with, um, you know, any less than, than 150. So if it's 160 kilobytes, then, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up because <laughs> it's less than that. I just, that's just my general rule of thumb. Um, so uh, yeah, and other people, other developers have different rules of thumbs as well when it comes to image sizes. Some people say, oh, you can put up an image size of a megabyte or whatever. Um, That's a good, good rule of thumb. And they might, yeah, and they might be right in some ways because they might have some backend things that are supporting the load of that website. So um, yeah, like, you know, the website's loading the images uh, through an Amazon content delivery network. So, you know, the website itself is not handling the image loads. Uh, the, uh, the images are stored, you know, somewhere else on a, uh, on another platform like Amazon or, um, uh, or, you know, if you're using Jetpack, uh, you can serve your images from their CDN uh, CDN is content delivery network. So then that helps to speed up the website as well. So, so this is a very basic version of just preparing your images before you upload them to the website. So it can really help bolster your, your page load speeds. Um, Paul, there's also, uh, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's also another consideration and that is, um, getting the image that will fit the, particular space that you're uploading to. And the important thing there is quite often you'll upload a photo and uh, the, or the file, whatever you're putting it into, will want to crop it automatically. Um, so being able to get an image to the dimensions of the site that you're placing it in is absolutely invaluable. Mm. Yes, absolutely invaluable. Yeah, because yeah. I've, I've um, so I was trying to work out the name of the one that I've been using. It's a free one. It's called Photoscape X uh, is what I've been using. And it's quite often you'll just automatically reduce it to pixel, size, to pixel size and then find it's either too small or too big for where you were going to put it. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I took over a website uh, a few years ago and all the images were, were large. And I just mm. I commented to the guy how about hard it how large they were, and he said the previous guy just told me to get faster hosting. But mm -hmm. I, I just went into each image, and you, you've got the ability in WordPress to actually change the image size. Yes. And I did it that way. Does that really help at all, or is it best doing it before you load it up? Um, yeah. It, that, is, that is definitely one way to do it. Um, is is use the yeah uh, use the WordPress editor to do it or the media um, edit. You can definitely do that. Um, I personally don't use that, but um, but yeah, that's that's definitely a way. Yeah. So, if, if I'm doing it from scratch, I'll, I'll change the size of the image before I put it up. Put it up. Yeah. But uh, you know, this this was a you had a whole pile of images that were already on there, and for me to do it any other way, I'd keep downloading them and resizing them and put them up again. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's just the reality. Yeah, I mean, I've taken over. I've I've ado adopted many sites that are, are similar. Um, is that yeah, you know the the website owner or the admin or the previous developer they've just uploaded um, 
<laughs> they've just uploaded like you know three megabyte files and stuff <laughs> like and then you know they're wondering why the site's loading and slow and um oh. yeah i mean i generally just i like to just i don't know do things a little bit i'm a little bit more anal and i'll just basically just bring that image down and then i'll i'll just manually resize it and um it takes 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 a lot longer but it's um it's just better off in in the long run um yeah. or i just get my you know my va to do it <laughs> get them give them something to do so um but yeah I, yeah i mean there's different there's a lot of different ways you can um you can tackle this and there are plugins so let me just go through those and um i'll just show you one i'll, I'll show you a few um so uh, has everybody heard of the OO image <laughs> optimizer plugin? Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, so this will this is like a this is a plugin that will actually you know um, reduce your image sizes for you um, on the uh, yeah in your media library. So um, again, I don't really personally use these images because uh, these plugins. Sorry, um, is because I. I I tend to just be, yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, uploading images in, in the right file size. Um, but, but yeah, in, in the, some cases uh, in the past where I've uh, taken over a site and I need to, you know, reduce things down a lot faster and um, then I might use one of these plugins to do it. Um, but they're not, they're not perfect. Like they're not like, you're not going to find anything that's amazingly perfect, but this definitely does help. Um, yeah, reduce the the file sizes and the um, doesn't reduce the file size. It reduces the uh, the sorry um, doesn't reduce the dimensions of the web the the image. It reduces the file size, so it just compresses it even more. So you're still going to have you know large image sizes. So um, yeah, it's um, kind of up to you how you want to sort of tackle that. Um, but anyway, so these so Ui Image Optimizer is a fairly good plugin. It's got eight hundred thousand plus installs, um, pretty good uh, star rating. So yeah, it's it's a a good one if you wanted to just throw it in and um, and optimize your images on mass. Another popular one is called Short Pixel. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one. Um, this is a, so the U one is free. Uh, then you got short pixel, which is, um, they've got a free version uh, and it's WordPress plugin as well. Uh, they've got a free version, but then you can also pay for, um, for other things like, you know, it, it just comes down to how many images that you're going to be uh, optimizing. So for the free version, you get 200 images per month, which, um, might might be good enough but yeah you just got to keep in mind that depending on how your website handles things is when you upload an image to your site it's going to create uh it's going to create multiple versions of that that image so it's going to actually it's going to reduce the, the the dimensions of the image down to certain sizes like thumbnail size um you know it just depends on the theme you're using uh, which dictates what um, what it's going to do, and how you you know um, what the image uh, image sizes that it creates. So um, so what Short Pixel does is it it will look at all those different file um, files that have been created by WordPress for that one single image, and it will um, it will you know compress all those versions of the one image. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. So, and short pixel, what they do is they they take a copy of the original. Uh, they take a copy of the original image and then um, they actually store it offsite on their servers. Um, they do all the uh, they actually take the image off your site. They do all the work on their servers and then they bring it back into your site. And it's all done through magic means. It's pretty amazing. So, so yeah. Um, so there's a couple of uh, uh, plugins that you can just throw in and and start optimizing your images uh, if you just don't want to do what I do. So, 
Uh, I just want to mention lazy load because we mentioned that earlier in the uh, conversation. So this is a uh, this is a particularly popular um, plugin, um, something I use sometimes, uh, depending on the site that I'm working on. But um, yeah, this will this will create lazy load of your images. Um, so then, as Jeff said before, uh, it only loads what you see on the page, so above the fold. And as you scroll down, uh, the images then, um, I think this also applies to like videos and other assets. Uh, so yeah, it just basically um, just loads what you what you see when you when you see to or when you scroll to it. So. Um, so that's a that's a cool little plugin that will will handle that for you. So and it's a uh, hundred percent free, which is great. So if you want something a little bit more um, uh, better for uh, image, uh, sorry, website load speeds, then you can have a look at WP Rocket. They're the guys that have created this plugin. So WP Rocket is a a paid for plugin that allows you to do a lot more um, page speed optimization or load speed optimization. So, so that's kind of it. I don't really want to confuse you any more than probably what I already have. So <laughs> does that, so does that all make sense? Yeah, haven't, yes. confused, yeah. Yeah. haven't confused me at all. That's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so ultimately, we just want to make our websites faster. We want to um, mm. upload images to the dimensions that they're displaying at on the website. Um, and, uh, and that will help to increase the load speeds. And, um, and then, yeah. And then that's, that's, that's pretty, much the, pretty much it. So anybody have any questions about this or anything in general? What does the alt alt text do that you need to put? I know that you're supposed to put it in the image when you set the image. So alt text, what does that do? Is that that gives it a name? Yeah. So the alt text is. Um, let me just uh, uh, let me go into. I want to see the page source. So alt text really is um, just because, you know, it's for SEO purposes. <clears throat> and it's also for accessibility as well. So because blind people, uh, blind people can't see images, obviously. Uh, so that's why we put in, say, an alt text. Uh, so it can help um, blind people and their screen readers mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see the image for them. So, so for a blind person, a screen reader will, you know, probably probably say, you know, it's a picture of, um, it will just read out what that, that image alt text is. So, you know, in my case, <clears throat> this will say, you know, WordPress dude at computer. <laughs> so the, the screen reader would probably say, you know, image, um, image of, and then the, the alt text of the, uh, the alt, yeah, the alt name of the image, just to help blind people. Now, this is the same uh, for Google. Google can't see images because it's a bot, right? So all it sees is code. Mm. So this is what this is what uh, this is what bots see. This is what the Google bot sees. It just looks at an uh, a page in in this particular fashion. So uh, doesn't make sense to you and I, um, but uh, for a bot, it does. So um, it wants to be able to see what you know what the image is. And then, you know, some people say, you know, you should put your keywords into the alt text and that will help and all that sort of stuff. It might help with, you know, Google image ranking, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's just good practice to put your alt text in just to do, it's just a description of the image. So yep. thank you. Um, that's essentially what it is, but it's, it just helps blind people and it helps Google understand what the website is about. Uh, further so yeah any other questions what are you doing next week <laughs> wow 
Uh, is there any? Is there any? Uh, is there anything you want me to touch on next week? Jetpack. Uh, jetpack. All right, I'll do a jetpack. Okay. Uh, I'll do a session on jetpack. So, does everybody know what jetpack is? I'll find I'll out. Work. I'll find I'll, out next week. You'll find out next week. That's it. I've got it, but I don't know what it does. So. Cool. All right. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just further um. Just another another tool by our, our friendly folks at Automatic. So, does everybody know who Automatic is? So you know how you got WordPress, and you've got WordPress.org and you've got WordPress.com. So let me just bring that up. So you've got WordPress.com here, uh, and you've also got WordPress.org. Okay, so uh, so WordPress.com uh, is the uh, is um, just you can start a website on this platform, and it's you know they host it, and you can build your website on WordPress.com, and you know similar to what Wix does, and all this sort of stuff. You can just set up your own account, and um, uh, you can have a free account, which then um, you know, well, you, your domain name could be, you know, like, um, you know, moana.wordpress.com, something like that, uh, for the free version. Uh, and then you can put your domain to it, but you need to pay for that. So, um, so automatic is the automatic is pretty much the development, um, company that is behind wordpress.com. So they, uh, they build and they maintain uh, WordPress.com, and they're the commercial arm of the of the whole WordPress ecosystem. So they um they do you know pre uh, premium hosting. So um, you know they do hosting for really large organizations. You know, and they've got really expensive hosting uh, WordPress hosting uh, sort of um, capabilities. And yeah, so they. They make a ton of money from that. They also make plugins as well. Um, you may have heard of, you know, Akisme, uh, which is your sort of your anti-spam commenting sort of plugin. Yep. So they're behind that. Um, yeah. So, and then you've got, uh, and then you got WordPress.org, which is your self-hosted um, version of WordPress. So this is where you can, you know, download the source file for WordPress and you can, um, go on, have a look at the plugin repository. So there's now, you know, 56,000 plugins available. The themes are here as well under the repository. And yeah, and this is all the, um, basically the open source, uh, you know, community uh, side of WordPress.org. Um, and I think the WordPress Foundation, uh, they pretty much, um, cover this and I think people from automatic as well and yeah there's a whole bunch of different sort of hierarchical tiers that that play with it but um yeah I think some some people from automatic also um yeah a lot of the development team over at automatic they'll also be um working on the um on the source code for WordPress as well for this for the self-hosted version so which is what most people are using. Otherwise, um, WordPress.com is pretty cool, but yeah, there are some limitations to what you can do as well. So you can't use, you, you might not be able to utilize the full range of uh, plugins that are available. Uh, they only lock down to a certain amount of plugins on this platform. So that's why, you know, um, you may, yeah, if you're on this platform and then you want to get a plugin in that doesn't work, then you need to maybe move out to a self-hosted, self-hosted version of WordPress. So does that make sense? Any questions yeah. about that? Thank you. That's, That's good. Yeah. Cool. Mm. And uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Mullenweg, uh, he, uh, he's the, well, he's a co-founder of WordPress and, um, yeah, he's the dude that's behind it. He's the face of uh, of WordPress. So you might see him around if you follow the um, you know, 
follow the the latest on what's happening with WordPress. And he does a st you know state of the word every year as well. He gets up and does a presentation on you know where where WordPress is at and where it's heading and all that sort of stuff. So he's kind of like the Steve Jobs of WordPress. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Thank you very much. That was really good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so is there any other questions? We've still got a bit of time. We started a bit later, but um, any other questions about image optimization or any other general questions about WordPress? Not at the moment. Is there anybody using Elementor? Yes, I, I use it fairly consistently. Yeah, cool. So you're familiar with, uh, with what you're seeing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. One question, Paul, and I don't know if I can explain this. Um, when I put an image into the media library, it's nearly always 1400 by 1400 because that's the CD standard uh, cover image, right? So right. that's in my library. Um, when I want to put that onto my post, it always comes up it appears very large and then I um, scroll it down you know when you when you pick up on the corner and you bring it down to a smaller size you yes know what I mean? yeah, yeah. What, what size is that actually transferring itself to other people's websites in other words what I'm trying to say is because I have it as looking a small image yep. is it is it actually a small image or is that just what I'm seeing on my screen? Yeah, but so... It will remain 1400 by 1400 as far as the loading is concerned. That's a bit odd. I can't explain it any other way. Yeah, yeah, correct. So, yeah, so you're taking the original image, you're uploading it to your yeah. page, um, and then you're resizing it by grabbing the corners of the... Um, yeah, I, I understand that. So what you're doing there is you're essentially just, you're just changing the dimensions of the original size of the image, right? So, yeah. um, so that's, uh, so that's kind of not, not the same as, um, so it's kind of similar to what I was doing here. So this, um, this third bottom image in this, this third column, these three columns. Yeah. So the original file size is actually this top one here, right? So yeah. If I click, if I right click on that and I go open up in image in new tab, then there's the image, there's the original image size. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So essentially what, what's happening is um, the browser is still seeing the image. Mm, okay. I, I, as, as this original size, but what it's doing is it's outputting it in a smaller dimension because you've set that to be that dimension in the, the editor, right? So um, similar to what I've done here, but the browser itself is still doing the work to make that larger image down to a smaller file size, yeah. like to a, a smaller um, image, how it displays on the output. So, mm -hmm. um, so in your case, like if the, if the image itself is displaying, say it's displaying um, as this small image here that I've got in this three column, if that's, if that's you know, how it's displaying on the website, um, then what I would do is I would make that image, I would make that image the same size as what it will display at. Mm. Unless you need to, you know, unless you want people to click on it and then it will upload, like it will blow up to a bigger file, like a bigger size so they can inspect it or see it uh, a lot closer. Um, it really just comes down to what you're trying to do with it. But if it's just a static image yeah. and you don't want to do anything else, then I would just, I would resize that image down from 1400 uh, yeah. to, you know, whatever it's going to be like 300, um, yeah, 300 pixels wide by 300 pixels wide, if that's how it's displaying on the outside, on the on the website. Sure, so. sure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, at um, the WordPress meetup a few weeks, a few months ago, there was somebody there who did um, image optimization. 
and uh, he had a very complex way of doing it. Yours to, to today was very simple. And I think anybody can follow that. And it's easy for everyone. So thank cool. you very much. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Mm. No worries. Yeah. Well, happy image optimizing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, any other Just questions saying. before we wrap up or um, no. No. pretty good. So, That's fine. and you're happy with uh, Jetpack next week? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Be interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Right. So yeah. how's the rest of our weeks looking? Are we, um, we in for a busy week or? Uh, always busy. <laughs> Not a waste of making money, but always busy. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, are you busy making money or just busy? <laughs> just busy. <laughs> just busy. <laughs> just busy. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I'll try and get on next week. That'll be great. Yeah, thanks, cool. Thanks, Mo. Thanks, right, down. Thank you so much. Right. Bye bye now. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Rianda. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank You're you. welcome, Jim. Take care, mate. Yep. <laughs> See ya. That's it. Hope everyone's learned something. <laughs>